His name is Cloud. Soldier. First class. Well, not really. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're exploring the origins of Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII. I think I want to be forgiven. Mm. More than anything. By who? Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Cloud was introduced to gamers in 1997, in what may be the most iconic entry in the storied franchise. When we first meet him, he's a mysterious and aloof young man helping out Avalanche, an eco-terrorist group with the goals of unseating the Shinra Corporation. Throughout the game, Cloud flashes back several times to years prior, when he was Sephiroth's partner and soldier, a superhuman fighting force working for Shinra. However, we eventually learn that this isn't his true origin. Cloud was born in Nibelheim and idolized Sephiroth all through his childhood, which is what made him want to become a member of Soldier. Despite his talents, he was only ever able to become an infantryman. This deeply embarrassed Cloud, and he hid this fact from everyone in his hometown. He would eventually be put on several assignments with Soldier First Class Zack Fair, and the two quickly became good friends. However, everything changed for Zack and Cloud after the deadly Nibelheim incident. At the Nibble Reactor, Sephiroth discovers that he is the result of the Genova Project and that he shares genes with an ancient alien being called Genova. In a fit of rage, he burns down Nibelheim, killing nearly everyone, and swears revenge on humanity, who he thinks stole the Earth from Genova. In the ensuing chaos, Zack and Cloud are able to defeat and seemingly kill Sephiroth, only to be kidnapped by Sephiroth's father, the mad scientist Professor Hojo. This one here, intriguing. Most intriguing. He'll make a fine test subject. In an attempt to make an army of Sephiroth copies, Hojo injects Cloud, Zack, and other test subjects with Genova cells. But Zack is mostly unaffected and manages to escape with a catatonic Cloud. While on the run, the two became high priority targets for both the Shinra Corporation and Genesis, a deranged soldier who needs Cloud's cells to stay alive. Zack manages to kill Genesis, but he meets a tragic end when he is gunned down by Shinra infantrymen. As he dies, Cloud awakens from his catatonic state, and Zack entrusts his buster sword to him. They're yours now. After wandering back to Midgar, still in a daze, he encounters Tifa at the Sector 7 train station. Upon seeing her, he snaps back into awareness, unintentionally fabricating an identity for himself where he became the man he always wanted to be and adopting many of Zack's memories as his own. What all this means is that the jaded Cloud we meet at the beginning of Final Fantasy VII has no memories of Zack, and believed himself to be a soldier first class and Sephiroth's ex-partner. The player doesn't discover the truth until the final third of the game, when Tifa is able to enter Cloud's subconscious and deduce the truth of the past. After coming to grips with his true identity, Cloud and his friends are able to prevent Sephiroth from summoning a meteor to destroy the planet, and Cloud finally frees himself of his connection to him with a handy limit break. Following the events of the game, Cloud and many other Midgar residents develop a disease known as Geostigma due to Genova's cells infecting the lifestream. Upon learning the truth of his identity, he appears to have developed a major case of survivor's guilt, blaming himself for the deaths of Zack and Aerith. I swore that I would never forget. I tried. He's forced to spring back into action when remnants of Sephiroth's will manifest physically as Kadaj, Laws, and Yazu. Though Sephiroth temporarily returns, Cloud is able to defeat him with some advice from Zack beyond the grave. Cloud, you know what I told you. That's right. I am your living legacy. Although it appears that Cloud has met his end by the end of the sequel film, Advent Children, Zack and Aerith rescue him from the afterlife and deliver a healing rain that cures the geostigma. You see, everything's alright. Since his debut, Cloud has become a gaming icon and one of the most instantly recognizable faces from the Final Fantasy series, and his Buster Sword has become one of the most iconic video game weapons of all time. 
Cloud has also made non-canonical appearances in the Kingdom Hearts series as well as the Super Smash Bros. franchise. Most exciting, though, is that we will once again get to take a journey with Cloud once the Final Fantasy VII Remake sees the light of day. <laughs> Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.